Hello, Oracles. Well, Tesla stock is up early, nicely ahead of the Fed speech. So we're looking at crypto early as well. It was climbing nicely overnight, seems to be creeping down quite a bit at the time of this recording. Tesla's up 1.8% and the Nasdaq is up 1.2%. So looking at what we could be seeing today, Jerome Powell is coming out and speaking at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time to discuss, we're not really sure, again, we had just had him on last week discussing you know, everything that's going on with the economy. So what I'm questioning is, is this a fake out or is this for real and we are going to rally from here? Was this uncertainty already priced into you know, the market and all the sell-off that we had from last week and now we're gonna rally into the end of the quarter or is this just a fake out and we're gonna sell off afterwards? We're going to be finding out in a few hours anyway to see what the market reaction is going to be. But just looking at what the Fed had said last week and the fact that Jerome Powell said we can expect to feel more pain for the near term. So looking at at least probably 12 months just based upon the Fed's roadmap for interest rates seems like we should have about 12 to 18 months of pain left to go before the Fed decides to U-turn. Unless of course this is over tightening, we do get a natural deflationary pressure coming in over the next few months and the Fed needs to U-turn sooner. We won't know this until we get to the end of the year, but based upon what the Fed has told us, this is what we could expect. So this is how I'm basically planning. And again, I always plan for the worst and hope for the best. So I'm planning for 12 to 18 months more of pain, but I'm hoping that maybe the Fed is over tightening and they're gonna have to U-turn sooner. Now, one of the questions I came up with last night for myself was, the Fed has been saying that their monetary policies and raising interest rates take a few months to take effect in the economy. We have already seen two quarters of negative GDP. So Jerome Powell has said that they're looking to intentionally slow down the economy by tightening the way they are. So now I'm asking, all right, well, they've already tightened as much as they have. They do plan on tightening more. We are already at a negative GDP. How do they intend to get us to a positive 0.2% GDP by the end of the year if they continue tightening as they are? You guys can let me know in the comments below what you think about that, but like, how could we possibly get ourselves to a positive GDP with more tightening when Jerome Powell has said that tightening is going to slow down the economy? I'm not a macroeconomist. I don't know these things. Maybe one of you guys do have the answer as to how that could play out, so please let us know. But I don't see how they could possibly do this without causing a further recession. This is what we saw with Paul Volcker back in the early 80s. You crank up interest rates super high, you intentionally cause a recession to slow down the economy. So if we're already in a negative GDP, which is a technical recession, how could we possibly go positive with further tightening? And this question alone, along with Jerome Powell telling us that we could expect to feel more pain in the near term, tells me that the rally that we are seeing this morning is really just a manipulation rally of some sort. So I don't think it's going to be a true rally. I've had many people ask in the comments, you know, what do I think is going to be the new rally? When do I think that we are actually going to turn around for real? Historically, it has been when the Fed does a U-turn. So at this point right now, based upon what the Fed says, whether you believe them or not, I have to just go by what he is telling us because we cannot control what the Fed is going to do. So based upon what he has told us, I would say end of 2023, beginning of 2024, we will see the next bull rally begin. Now again, if the Fed does end up over tightening and they need to U-turn sooner, that bull market could start before then. And don't forget that the market always looks six months ahead as well. So usually six months before the Fed does that U-turn, the market's going to anticipate that and we could probably see it climbing at that point. And so now the next question is, have we already hit the bottom? Well, we don't know. Again, we have to see how this is. And one of the things that we had mentioned earlier in the year is when we do end up climbing out of this, we may not know for six months that we did hit the bottom. So currently right now, late May to early June was the bottom for Tesla stock. So right now, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Are we going to pull down to those levels? Chances are no, but you never know. I mean, if we pull down to those levels again, that's $207. I have heard from some people thinking that we could pull back down to those levels. I truly don't know. Just based upon the charts, we have the gap at 247. So I'll follow that one with the rally we have going on this morning. Maybe we did hit the bottom of the near term of the 275 and we come back up. Tonight again, I'm gonna go over the charts in a live stream. So if you guys wanna join me there, I'll show you the kind of patterns that I'm seeing going on, which are kind of leading me to believe that this is going to be just kind of a fake rally that we see today. Not really sure. Again, no one knows the future, but the way I'm looking at it is I have some buys that are put in lower to be able to add more for less. So that's what I'm paying attention to. And again, long-term, none of this really matters. Anytime you buy between whatever prices you're gonna buy it, whether it's 200, 250, 300, 
Long term, it's truly not going to matter. I just do this because I wanna buy more for less because I do not have a lot in my portfolio. And now one of the next concerns I know many people have is, well, if the Fed is pushing us in the direction of a deeper recession, how is Tesla going to handle this? Well, don't forget when it comes to recessions, pricing power is going to rule the day. Tesla dominates when it comes to pricing power. So when we get to the time where, you know, there's less money in the economy, less people who can afford the vehicles, you're gonna think, well, Tesla's got a higher priced vehicle, who's going to buy them? Usually the most customers that are out there that are buying Teslas don't get affected by the recession as much as others, but Tesla can also bring down the prices of their vehicles to be able to sell to more people and they'll still make profits on top of it. Legacy Auto does not have that option. Most startups do not have that option. If they brought the price of their vehicle down any further, they would lose even more money on top of it. You do not want to be losing money during a recession. That is a big no-no. That is going to lead you into a dark, dark place. Thinking about the fact that if the Fed is going to be pushing us to a higher unemployment rate, if you have companies like Legacy Auto who can't afford to pay their workers, they have less people doing the job, less vehicles getting produced, less vehicles sold, less profits coming in, that's just a downward spiral for all of them. So going into a recession, it's gonna be ugly for everyone. It's not gonna be a pretty picture, but Tesla would be able to come out of this thriving even more. We've discussed this many times in the past where coming out of a recession, Tesla would actually be stronger than if we didn't go into a recession. Tesla's gonna come out strong either way, in my opinion. I think Tesla could just come out even stronger with a recession just because of the fact that there won't be as many people competing with them because they're gonna end up going bankrupt. We are already getting discussions about zombie companies and zombie companies are companies that are out there that aren't making any profits and they can't even pay their bills off You know, when it comes to just the interest rate on all of their loans. So if companies cannot do that, they are considered a zombie company. That usually happens in a recession. That's what we saw back in the 2008 and 2009 housing recession. We saw a lot of that going on. We saw a lot of that going on in the dot-com bubble. Times like this are actually good because it kind of thins out a bunch of companies that really shouldn't be companies anymore. So whether legacy automotive companies or whether startups are going to end up going into that zombie category, I don't know. But going into that time right now, looking at that's just starting to happen, we've seen the PE compression going on. We are going to be seeing earnings compression going on over the next couple of quarters. Tesla could be weathering this one better than everyone else. Tesla is growing. Meanwhile, Legacy Auto is basically flat. They've been shrinking over the last two years, so they have already been seeing earnings compressions. This could continue as well. And with Legacy Auto trying to switch over to EVs from their ICE vehicles and not making any money on their EVs, they are going to be facing a very difficult transition. So if we end up going into a recession that is worse than we are already seeing, Legacy Auto is going to struggle even more. And so coming out of it, Tesla is just going to thrive. Remember, Tesla basically has no debt right now. And so if Tesla brings down profits, it's not like they're gonna have less money coming in to pay off their debt. They don't have debt. It just means that they're gonna have less free cash flow. And honestly, their free cash flow is insane right now, probably looking at five to $6 billion for this quarter. So. If that comes down a little bit, that's fine because nobody else has that kind of free cash flow with the growth projections that Tesla has. Now onto some Tesla specific news. Gary Black had tweeted out that of all the luxury brand models here in the US, Tesla is not only leading the way with 289,000 deliveries in the first half, but they are also up 55% year over year. When it comes to everyone else and all of the competition, no one is positive and they are down an average of negative 20%. So Tesla significantly outperforming all of its competition with deliveries here in the US. And that is all vehicles. That's not just EVs, that is all vehicles, all luxury brands. And so looking at production and delivery numbers that we are anticipating this weekend, looks like analyst expectations are around north of 350,000 vehicles delivered, which is a record for Tesla in a quarter. I personally have them at 369,000. Now the problem that I'm running into right now is my production and delivery numbers have always been nearly the same. Tesla has carried over 10,000 vehicles from their July inventory into August and has also carried that into September. Now we've also been hearing from Troy Tesla like that seems like Shanghai is coming up a little short on deliveries from what we expected earlier in the month. Earlier in the month, we were expecting over 100,000 vehicles getting delivered. Looks like they might actually fall short of 90,000. So between 80 and 90,000 are what the expectations are for deliveries over in Shanghai. So does this mean that Tesla is going to be carrying over even more inventory into Q4? Or is there going to be a surprise going on of some sort? 
Not really sure. We're going to find out this weekend most likely. You guys can let me know in the comments below what you think. I will be doing a full production and delivery breakdown uh, video later on this week to go over all the numbers that I can foresee that's going on. So you guys can feel free to share in the comments below and I'll discuss all of those as well. But I think this weekend and, and looking at the stock price movements going into this weekend, I'm not sure if we're going to see uncertainty or if we're going to see a run up into the weekend based upon some of the rumors. So here's where I'm torn. We've got AI Day 2022 coming up on Friday evening. So we've got that coming out and it's going to be, you know, the big event's going to be coming on after hours. So if it's going to come after hours, there may not be a lot of stock movement going on. Then we got production and delivery numbers over the weekend where it looks like we are going to be beating expectations from Wall Street, but we also may fall short of what a lot of other people thought we would come up with. So do we run into it expecting us to beat? Are we going to be beating on Monday? Again, I don't know, and I know it's very wishy-washy. I cannot make that prediction. It is way all over the place. You guys can let me know your thoughts in the comments as to which way you think the stock is going to move this week based upon all of that information. But, you know, just a lot of stuff going on for Tesla this week. And in my opinion, it's very exciting news. I think it's awesome. AI Day 2022, we're going to get a lot of great information. And even if Wall Street doesn't understand it, many of us know what it's truly going to mean. The production and delivery numbers, we are going to beat records. That means that we are continually growing. That, to me, is very positive. So even if we don't come into line with, you know, even if it falls short of the 370,000 that I think, we beat expectations. We're beating the last record quarter that we had, which was 310,000 that we had back in Q1. So we're still moving in the right direction. So all of this is good and positive stuff for me. It's just a matter of how is Wall Street going to look at this and how are they going to move the stock price. And for AI Day 2022, don't forget, I will be looking to do a collaboration with my Tesla weekend. We're still coordinating what we're going to do, whether it's going to be just a live stream on his channel or if we're going to do a dual live stream. Either way, I will let you guys know for sure. It's going to be an awesome, awesome evening. So very much looking forward to that. And so again, let me know in the comments below. Do you think this early rally that we are seeing this morning is going to live throughout the day after the Fed speech, or do you think this is just a fake out when we're going to come down afterwards? Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support and feedback. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Sign yourself up for notifications. If you found value in this video, please consider sharing it with others. We do have a membership program, lots of great perks down there. I am over on Twitter at OracleTim1. I share all the latest Tesla news, pertinent stock market information, and all of my daily trades. We do have a Discord chat, that link is down in the description. And if you'd like to support the channel any further, we do have a Patreon, that link is also in the description. Thank you so much, have a great one.